know, we would have known who would have been our next president, except uh, what happened over the weekend. But, well, sometimes they said uh, better late than never. But again, let's go back a bit. You remember in 2011, we were on the queue trying to cast our votes for National Assembly elections when the news filtered in the election has been postponed due to logistic problem. So logistic has not been, not, this is not the first time logistics has been given as a reason for postponement of election. In 2015, we saw a postponement, but that time not from INEC, but more from what emanated from the Office of the National Security Advisor now former, uh, if you like, talking about retired Colonel Sambo Dasuki. But almost few hours to Saturday, the INEC chairman was insistent that INEC was prepared and there was, they, don't, they had no cause to postpone the election. But for some of us, it filtered in around 10, 11 p.m. that there was going to be a postponement. We were awake until that 2.30 a.m. when eventually the news came that there was a postponement. For one week, the INEX chairman actually briefed the media on what actually transpired. Logistics, well, talking about colleagues across the state, I mean, you could imagine if uh, material meant for Enugu was still in Port Harcourt, uh, by Saturday morning, <laughs> you just could imagine what that means. But just yesterday, the Minister of State Aviation, Hadi Sirika himself, a pilot, came out and said INEC lied on the issue of uh, 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 weather being a problem. Well, whatsoever the problems are, as it is, the election is rescheduled. That is what we shall be looking at this morning. But then, well, Kaduna has been in the news for the wrong reason. The alleged killing in Kajuru local government area. A lot of people are saying, well, that was an incident that happened between Sunday and Monday, and the securities were on top of the situation to manage it, traditional rulers. But on the eve of the election, the governor came out and made the announcement. And the question has been, why wait for almost four or five days before bringing that to the fore, when election was just a few hours away? Uh, was there more than mid the eye? Well, be rest assured, we shall get to the root of that. We shall bring you the stakeholders, those concerned, to talk about this, or as the officers will say we need to actually put the trade where they're supposed to be so that you can actually see the bigger picture but whatsoever the situations are the prayers of the people of Kaduna state is may we have leaders and not rulers may we have leaders who will unite the people and not divide the people uh, may God do away with merchants of uh, crisis and others well we'll leave that be rest assured in the days ahead we will talk about that issue again I promised you we'll bring the stakeholders concern here to actually give us the true picture Last week we promised to have the commissioner of police here, but of course running helter skelter he couldn't. But hopefully before the election we will also have the commissioner of police here with us. Well, postpone election, rescheduled. Uh, let me use that rescheduled. I think that is more like it. It's what we are looking at this morning. And from my immediate right we have somebody with a security background, somebody who is a politician, uh, probably somebody who will have uh, behind the scene information more than some of us here with us. Honorable Mohammed Ali, former minority leader, Kaduna State House of Assembly. Honorable, good morning. It's my pleasure. Thank good you to have you me. here. All right. Yeah. We also have a politician here. Well, that is a part that we don't know if they have presidential candidate or uh, who the presidential candidate is. And I've been running here and there between Jerry Ghana, Donald Duke. Well, one group supporting Atiku, another supporting Buhari. Uh, but, well, that is not the topic for today. But I'm sure before the presidential election, we shall talk about that. This morning with us, Kaduna State Chairman of the Social Democratic Party, uh, talking about Idris Adamu. Good morning. Good morning, viewers. Good to have you here. Thank you very All much. All right. Well, <coughs> And I'm sure if you live in Abuja, not just in Abuja, I'm sure uh, there have been a lot of uh, here and there with the police and so on, what have you, things like that. Uh, somebody who you can refer to more as an activist, somebody who is popularly known as IG Wala. The IG there stands for Ibrahim Garba Wala. Ibrahim, good morning. Thank you, Abdullah. It's good to have you here. Thank you so much. All right. Yeah. All right. Let me start with you. We were here last week, I mean, given last touch on the elections. But uh, I mean, until a few hours to that, nobody actually anticipated uh, that there will be a postponement, especially with the reassurance of the INEC chairman, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu. But then, all of a sudden, in the middle of the night, I mean, as of Saturday morning, some people were meant to understand, even went out to queue, <laughs> not aware that the election has been postponed. What do we make of this uh, rescheduled post? 
Well, <coughs> so it used to be expected since humans are never perfect. But uh, ideally, I think I should even first start by apologizing to all Nigerians for the rescheduling of uh, election coming very late, okay. uh, as it did. Because until around uh, 3 a.m. before Nigerians, who are, who are awake at, as of that hour, uh, got to understand that the elections have been rescheduled. Rescheduled because of uh, the issue of logistical Logistics. problems, uh, which, of course, as of the hour of 4 a.m., some ballot papers that are meant for Kaduna State were still languishing in Kano. Uh, materials meant for Lagos were yet to be delivered as of 4 a.m. on Saturday. So, uh, and so many other places across the country. So be that as it may, it will not be really proper for the elections to go ahead because if that happens, certain people, a large chunk of the population will be disenfranchised okay. because of the lack of, uh, you know, the essential materials that will make the voting feasible in the respective locations uh, that lack or have not received these uh, supplies. Uh, that is one. Uh, secondly, even in the uh, INEC office here in Kaduna, you discover that uh, groups that have applied and have been okay to be observers. Uh, up to 7 p.m. on Friday, they were not issued with their observer tags, the, the jackets and uh, the car stickers that will you know, enable them to drive around and observe the elections and issues like that. So by and large, I think there is some what I may regard as an act of laxity on the part of probably the the the, the, the chap in charge of the uh, logistics at the INEC headquarters in Abuja. Okay. I think uh, something went wrong, and this is why we found ourselves in the quagmire we have to contend with. But given that scenario, I want to honestly and sincerely apologize to Nigerians and urge them to take out and let's come out in mass on the 23, the rescheduled date, so that we'll all exercise our civic responsibility of electing our leaders. Okay. Yes. Well, we come to Honorable uh, Idris. I mean, we, we just work on, even though politicians, like Adam Sushama, they said, if you politicians have incurred so much, I mean, moved all the logistics and what, they, I mean, spent so much money on what have you, uh, but what do you make of the uh, rescheduled post? Yes, uh, that's part the, the apology by my Honorable Mm -hmm. Who is assuming the, the role the of position, INEC? The position of the national chairman of INEC. Uh, we, at the party level, it is unfortunate. We are not happy. And it is completely lamentable. Mm -hmm. Because, um, you know, issues of uh, election, it involves a lot of arrangements. And these arrangements, uh, it, it goes along with costs which we, like we, the parties that are in opposition, which have never been in government, we worked hard, go round to our members, solicit, come around to see that we are able to be in the election. Now, INEC woke up just a few hours to the election, to the opening of the polls, to say that uh, they have rescheduled the election. So this is very unfortunate, and uh, Nigerians, uh, we are used to such kind of shocks. If not, if it were in other climes, the situation would have been different. But we accept it the way they say it. But we must tell Nigerians that the election might not be the way Nigerians expected it, because already we have exhausted all our energies. And now they are telling us to come and do the same thing we did. Isn't this an opportunity to re-energize? How can we re-energize? We have no government. One, one who, all right, I'll, I'll come back to you. Thank you. Let me, let me, let me go to uh, Wala. Uh, can we actually link this rescheduled, I mean, to issue of logistics? Um, yes, I think uh, by sitting down here, 
trying to convince ourselves that yeah, it's something that is normal, it do happen and it has happened and we should move on. I don't agree with that. Okay, why don't you agree with this? This, what happened actually exposed what our institutions represents. Our institutions <coughs> are weak. There are a lot of incapacity within some of the units in the institutions. It goes a long way to tell us that sometimes administrative uh, challenges that exist that we, we ignore, we don't pay attention to, can manifest itself in this form. And lots and lots of people think it is normal. It's not normal. Okay. We must go back to investigate. Something big has gone wrong. An institution that's supposed to actually give us the opportunity to exercise our civic duty, to choose the next, I mean, I mean, to take ourselves from where we're coming from to the next phase of our lives, mm -hmm. that institution has failed us. Something wrong happened, and some people are responsible for whatever it is. But we are not talking about asking, going into these institutions, mm -hmm. or this particular institution, to look at what truly happened so that whoever is at fault should be made to face the law. First and foremost, the culprit is the person in charge. We don't want to know if actually he did his best and failed. What, what actually transpired, he has failed. And the institutions have failed. Yeah, but, but, but this is not the first time we are seeing a postponed election. It's we not it in an excuse as a nation that mm. want to move forward. Mm. Now, look at the, f the, the, the previous events mm. of elections being postponed, or the situation actually. In 2011, yes, it happened. It was so there and so clear that the, yes, the government at the, uh, of the moment, as of then, was so desperate. And whatever reasons they gave us, Nigerians accepted, and they said it will not repeat itself. The same administration, they came again in 2015, it happens again. But 2015 was from the government, 2011 was from INEC. Well, I don't want to separate, I don't know how to separate INEC and the government. Yes, because there is no way you could tell Nigerians that yes, postponement of election or decision to postpone that election actually happened because INEC was purely independent. No. Well, that, 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 that will come back to you. I remember taking it from that. Because this independence of the INEC yes. to decide yeah. what to do and what if you things like that. Because there are people, sorry, yeah. there are people who are actually talking, okay, there was no way INEC would have taken that decision without the knowledge of the federal government, the executive to be precise for instance. But one, the issue of the independence of INEC, does it in, INEC have the independence to act the way it wants in, it, in the interest of the public, of the nation. Secondly, if INEC have the uh, blessing of the presidency, will the president still be in the rubber diet about that hour and come out and say he was shocked? Um, INEC under the current dispensation is, is independent. And uh, the public should understand, and let me say it very loud and clear, the president was shocked. Uh, at the announcement that the elections uh, were postponed because he was in Dora waiting to cast his vote only for him to, to be informed that the elections had been rescheduled. And uh, he did not leave Dora until Sunday afternoon. So this gets to show you that uh, it is also a big embarrassment, not just uh, to the president, but the country as uh, you know, at large. We've been embarrassed uh, globally because we have all the foreign election observers on ground. They were ready and waiting to see, you know, the conduct of a credible election. But unfortunately, what has happened has happened. Uh, be that as it may, we should not uh, start, uh, you know, apportioning blame for now. What we need to do is to rededicate ourselves and look forward to the elections as, sh as rescheduled on the 23rd of uh, this month. Let's all work hard and ensure that uh, the elections actually hold as rescheduled. 
and uh, peacefully too. This, I think, should be a major preoccupation now, to have the elections as rescheduled on the 23rd, and Nigerians should eschew, uh, you know, all grievances and, you know, uh, and disagreements and come out and vote so that everybody will have the freedom to exercise his or her franchise of electing uh, our leaders, as it were. Then after that, uh, it will not be wrong to set up a commission of inquiry to look into what really happens. There are certain things actually that I wouldn't want to say loud uh, at this forum because I think it is not for this moment. Uh, yes, time will come. Mm -hmm. So who, is, who should set up that commission of inquiry? Inquiry. I like it so. <coughs> Or the executive, um, the, uh, whether INEC or, or, or the or the or the Senate, uh, the, the, the Senate has a committee that is uh, in charge of uh, INEC. So that committee should uh, look into what actually happened. Why? Why? Why did it happen? And so on. There are a lot of things, uh, you know, speculations making the round. But just as I said, I don't want to be uh, sound, you know, prejudicial at this moment. Uh, let's leave. Uh, let's allow sleeping dogs to lie. Uh, the right time will come when some of these things will be made open. Okay. Yes. Well, at this point, let's take a quick break. Uh, when we come back, for a party like Social Democratic Party, isn't it enough time given to them to put their act in together, at least before the polls? Uh, and for Nigerians, well, let's see uh, if this will not be in their favor. But then, like uh, Mohamed Ali said there, there have been a lot of speculations out there in the polity. Uh, we will always talk about some of this uh, speculation and what we feel uh, should be done to avoid a repeat of what we saw last weekend. We will be right back.
some Liberty Television voice for all and vision for all. The name is Abdul Aziz Ahmed Kader, and we are looking at the rescheduled uh, presidential National Assembly election. Even the gubernatorial state houses of election, uh, state houses of houses of assembly, has been rescheduled. And this morning, we have with us as our resource people, former minority leader of Kaduna State House of Assembly, somebody with security background, talking about uh, Honorable Muhammad Ali. Of course, next to him is the chairman, Social Democratic Party, Kaduna State Chapter, Idris Adamu. And of course, uh, an activist by all means, talking about the man popular known as IG Wala. The IG there stands for Ibrahim Garba. Okay, chairman, let me come to you. I mean, yeah. Considering the problem we see, I mean, if we can call it problem within your party, for instance, uh, isn't this an opportunity for your party to actually put put its acts together before the election, rescheduled election? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every disappointment sometimes mm. is, is uh, you, you achieve from it. Um, like in our party, we we have taken this in good faith, and we are going to sit down and go to areas where we could not reach and still expand our tentacles, seek for the votes, talk to people, and see that um, we, we achieve success. Uh, but be as it may, you know, we are human beings. You see, like I Jewala said, our institutions are supposed to also be democratic. Whatever decision they are going to take, there are critical stakeholders which such a decision would directly affect. Having seen the indicators, or if they don't even have mm. the, 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 the mechanism to see this coming, they should have understand that this election might not hold at the time this been shouting but over, about that, over a year. Critical stakeholders, because I like said even few hours to the time it postponed that election, it was still getting court ruling because some of you politicians keep going to. Court that will not stop INEC. The, the court ruling did not say INEC don't conduct election. It did not say so. It's either you want to replace a candidate mm. that maybe feel aggrieved at the primaries of the various parties, but it did, the court order did not stop INEC from conducting election. So that should not be even a reason for them to come out and tell the world that. see it amounting to a waste of resources. To, to, to from to who? The election, then at the end of the day, got a court ruling that nullified such election. I have to go back to... Uh, it is not nullifying the election. These are pre-election matters. They are not election, proper election issues. Okay. As I'm telling you is that, this commission is supposed to be a democratic commission where it's supposed to call all the relevant stakeholders. Even if it is 4 a.m., they should be able to summon people and tell them this is what we have seen. We're, and we're, we're meant to understand by that time some of you politicians were still on the field doing what you Of course, do we, we can send representation. You, it's not necessarily the national chairman must be there. Okay. He can send anybody close around to go and sit at the meeting. Okay. Well, uh, well let me come to you. There have been a lot of speculation. Of course, like on moment, Ali says, some of them are out there and what of you. Uh, one is the issue of disagreement between the INEC chairman and Amin Azakari. The names of Amin Azakari kept reoccurring and what of you. <coughs> incident like this happened, even though some of them mm. might not be true. But we know INEC has its independence, procurement, everything, and what have you, things like that. Should such disagreement be an issue <coughs> uh, that will lead to such it lead to such a decision like postponement? Well, um, I think talking about internal disagreement mm. in organizations like INEC, INEC. Uh, we, we like it or not, at the heat of preparation, meaning at the peak mm. of preparation mm. towards the elections, if for any reason, there should be some form of misunderstanding or disagreement. Mm -hmm. I know some, some, sometimes back, the media actually reported some of this fracas mm -hmm. be between the top management staff. Now, this actually tells you that, look, there's instability in, in a particular unit or, uh, or within s some units that are critical to the success of preparation okay. of these elections. Mm -hmm. So if, for example, with what you've just mentioned, uh, the name of I Amin mean, Zakari keep coming back, what actually prompted, in the first place, what actually prompted the news or the story? It shows, yes, there was some sort of a, probably uh, kind of an, an internal, um, let, let, let's say, let's say, 
let's say, shake up, where the management or the, or the chairman feels he wants to work with certain people in certain positions and all that, and others are saying no to that. I can assure you that for as long as there's something, I mean, not, I mean, there's some, some sort of a disagreement in that within the organization, it will definitely affect some of these units. Okay. And to be precise, funny enough, it is the department where Amina was. Logistics. Logistics. Before she was moved to... Exactly. So what happened? Are we saying, yes, there's some sort of sabotage within, probably, as a result of the, you know, I don't want to go there, mm. but I want to still have a so much that the independence of INEC, mm. Yes, we know it's independent when it comes to probably all their dealings internally with regards to procurement, with regards to who takes what contract, who does this. But again, again, if we are talking about decision, like the politicians are pointing out, that no, you can't take that kind of a decision. We understand there's a section of the uh, electoral act. act that actually says you can they, you cannot postpone election without actually or leaving the vacuum, leaving a vacuum of dates. There has to be a date when next to to, 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 to carry on with the elections, understandably. But at what point, how did I make? If it is logistics, are you saying that yes, you still have within this one week of adjournment, you're so certain that yes, you're going to get it right? Is that what we're saying? Without anybody losing his position or his seat? And we feel, okay, we want to carry on. Well, we're losing a position held by this time. Now, Even anybody, will that help the situation? Now, now, if that, no, no, it will, sure. How will it help? Will Thank it you. worsen the situation? Thank you, no. If the chairman is meant to step down, mm. in the first place, we should understand that mm. there is no single chief, exec, uh, chief of executive, I mean, chief executive of any position mm. that has monopoly to what goes in within his organization. Because anything can happen. What if somebody dies? I don't wish anybody. It. But what if today we wake up and I say, yeah, Wala is not here to speak here? So does that mean that this seat, does somebody cannot occupy this seat? This, we, should, we should be broad-minded mm -hmm. in, in whatever we do. So it is better in the interest of the country, it is in the interest of our democracy to always know that once there's an undermining or somebody is actually trying to bring us back, let us find a way to move the country forward by not allowing somebody to hijack one person. Now the culture we have, respectfully to Honorable uh, uh, Muhammad Ali, um, sir, I want us to shift from that culture of you elders always want us to believe that no, we should just take it easy, calm, and allow things to move on. There will be a time to investigate this. Now, Nigerians, we are good in covering our tracks, especially when we do something bad. By now, I'm sure the blame game must have been going on in INEC. Who is to blame who? Who is to push? The bigger ones will always blame the smaller ones, those that are in a lower position. That they cannot talk. You dare not challenge your, your boss or your, your head or your supervisor by telling him that, look, you caused this problem, but you are pushing it on me. It will be a situation whereby somebody may end up losing his job. We all understand this. So this culture of saying, whatever happens, please, let us hit the nail on the head immediately. Let us deal with that problem and let's move forward so that we don't give room for those who will come and say, no, it is not me. No, 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 I have to. Somebody will run to talk to his uncle who is uh, somewhere in a higher position to come and actually give him that cover and protection. Okay. We understand how the system oh, All right, yes. no, let me come to you. I mean, cool, cool disagreement on logistics because, I mean, as a curry, give it to her. This is somebody who has been in INEC at a point. When Jega left, she became the acting chairman. And Amina has delivered in all assignment given to her. INEC uh, is unfortunately we don't have INEC officials here because they are busy uh, trying to make uh, make ends meet. We'll tell you anybody who worked on Amina as a career in the past will tell you Amina has been excellent in all assignments given to her. Could her removal from logistics actually affect what we are seeing today? To a large extent, uh, her removal from being the director of logistics. Mm -hmm precipitated what uh, we are today paying for okay. and uh, this essentially was caused by the opposition because they kept hammering demanding for her removal, demanding for her removal that she's this to the president he's that forgetting for a fact that I mean as was appointed by the regime of president former president Gulag Jonathan mm -hmm. 
is that is that is that right? Yeah. So, but they kept making noise that this and that. Um, but from what has now happened, uh, it is very clear to us that uh, the PDP in particular, because if I said uh, the opposition, opposition, I'm making a general statement, mm -hmm. it's good to be very particular. The PDP have a game plan. This was why they insisted for Amina Zakari to be removed, to be replaced by Okichuku. Now, what has happened has happened. So immediately after the elections, just as uh, Wala said, uh, saying things people should exercise patience, you know, uh, is important because we need the elections to hold as rescheduled. Okay. So by the time you start inviting people for profiling or, or interrogation, uh, people will begin to make, you know, uh, insinuations and things like that. So this is why let's allow the elections to hold, then immediately after the elections, whoever it is that is responsible for what has happened will certainly have to pay for that. And uh, people who are calling for the removal of uh, Professor Yakubu, I think they have not been fair to themselves. We saw that with Jega too. Uh, Jega got the it's, applause it's, at the it's, end of it's, the day. It's very, it's very wrong because uh, just as I said at the beginning, we are all human. and. Uh, Things like this, you know, is to be expected because uh, no woman is perfect. But let's allow the elections to hold as rescheduled. Then immediately after, there are certain things, as I said much earlier, that uh, we cannot really discuss uh, on the forum no, like this. No. But uh, immediately, in fact, already work is ongoing, trying to ascertain who did what and why, or who refused to do this and why. So at the end of the day, I think whoever is responsible for embarrassing Nigeria and causing the loss, because Nigeria lost nothing less than 1.5 billion because of this postponement of elections. Billion dollars on era. In, 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 uh, uh, dollars. Yes. 1.5 billion dollars. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. So it's a big loss. Yeah. Uh, well, well, let me come to you, Rui uh, Idris. What do you think are the way forward? What do you expect INEC to do to avoid a repeat of what we saw last Saturday? Well, well, well I feel INEC is a system. Um, and that system is supposed to be a, a, a moving system, a very working system. Okay. You see, I don't believe in personalizing uh, offices. You see, INEC has a system where every, every office performs its own functions. And where such a problem occurs, that office should be sanctioned. We have this uh, mentality that uh, the head always receives the, the blames. No, the head cannot know everything that is happening within his, his domain. But the relevant office that is concerned, that causes this, this national embarrassment, those involved should be punished accordingly. I think that will serve as a deterrent. We should not allow it to be that it is a human mistake. No, a human mistake has a cost. And that cost, as the Honorable said, it involves a lot of things. For example, uh, so many people travel out simply to go to their villages to cast their votes. A lot of businesses closed down. Schools were, were sent home. Children were sent home from International schools. International organizations. International organizations, everywhere. The whole borders were closed. This is an enormous loss, which supposed not just to go like that. Okay. Somebody must answer for it. OK. I mean, before even asking, I mean, while I should we always, always make go to election as if we are going to war? Close borders, close schools, close everywhere. We're in other climes. I mean, people go and vote, go to their shops, go to their workplaces, and what have you, things like that. Shouldn't we have gone past that stage by now? Yes, and that is what you expect. When, when it, every government has stepped into office or, 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 or obtained the power, it is much more like they are there for a business, for their personal business. We've seen from 1980s to date, there were countries that yes, Nigeria was far, far, far ahead. We have every potentials we require to build a country, but we end up building individuals. We don't build institutions. Individuals get into the government and become much richer than their own states. 
then the, even the institutions they are serving. What do you expect? This is the outcome of when we fail to have governance to favor the country, to favor the people. You don't expect other institutions to actually give all the support and desire. Now, on that note, I think going to uh, elections like war is pertinent. Pertinent in the negative side because individuals are looking at the opportunities they are going to actually reap from whatever struggle they make politically and they ensure that they obtain those positions, not in the interest of the people. We have IDP camps all over places. We have institutions that are not working. Our learning institutions, every day, whether from the beginning of a new administration to the middle of it or to the end of it, we all witness strikes. We all witness health centers that are not working. How do you expect election? Like I said yesterday in one of the programs here in Hausa, I said if we are to host a World Cup, Rest assured that that World Cup will be suspended because all institutions are supposed to give the support to ensure that that World Cup is successful. We will not will not be there. The police have their problems. The politicians, probably some of the head of agencies that are appointed, to also supposed to key in to the agenda of the Mr. President. Each one of them has his own agenda. Siphoning resources, money, leaving the country. What is the I mean, I mean, statistics coming from global agencies that are pointing out to the poverty rate in Nigeria. Over 90 million citizens are living in a desperate situation of poverty, and we say we want to do elections successfully. All What's right. wrong? All right, before we open the line, from the briefing we saw from the chairman of INEC, from the resident electoral commissioners across the state, yes. can we say, as it is, INEC is transparent enough uh, for us to have that confidence in them that next Saturday won't be a repeat of last Saturday? Uh, certainly, yes. We should uh, look ahead with hope and confidence that certainly the elections will take place as we schedule on the 23rd. I think they've uh, commenced reconfiguring most of their card readers. card readers, and I believe either tomorrow or next, they should be true with the configuration of all the card readers. So that being done, I believe... Uh, the elections will hold. Okay. Uh, as of today, most of the sensitive materials have been uh, delivered at their respective states, okay. and they've been put in the custody of the central bank no. in such uh, you know states. So I believe uh, everything is equal. The elections will hold as rescheduled. So All Nigerians right. should be rest assured and should be ready and willing to go out and cast their votes. All right. At this point, let's open the lines for the viewer to be part of the program. Please, when you call in, keep the volume of your TV set down so that we can have effective communication. And when you call in, please, go straight <coughs> to the point. We have our first caller. Hello, good morning. Yeah, good morning, Abdullah. Thank you for joining us. Uh, uh, good morning. I represent SMB from Kano. Okay, SMB from Kano. Go ahead. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, Abdullah, uh, obviously, Nobody, nobody in Nigeria will tell you that it's a deal with this development. Uh, but my worry is, uh, I believe, uh, you are a journalist. Uh, usually, in terms of this uh, election, I don't need to give you rent to a police unit uh, to give out the situation report. Uh, certainly, you know, sometimes, that for any kind of election, you have that there are some certain police units that uh, the material behind the election materials are not available. Mm -hmm. People are there waiting for either the staff or the open center. So does that mean that we still remain a logistic problem of ever in the American election in Nigeria? Now, who are we to believe now? Just up to this day is that we have that number say that uh in that Friday there is no any no any weather problem they around their activity for twenty four hours. Now the INF chairman has mentioned the 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 the, the, the logistics that has to go with the weather and so on and so forth. What the problem with the system? Where are we to believe? Does this mean that we still continue to have a weaker institution? All right. We agree on the court issue, but I think court has to have limit for any primary institution to take. All right, uh, SMB. I think you made your point. Uh, hello, good morning. Hello. Good morning. Hello, go ahead. Your name or where you're calling from? Yeah, uh, I'm calling from, from Jos. All right. From Jos, man. Okay, Usman, go ahead from Jos. Uh -huh. So, this we're saying that what I think has been, we know they have other that have happened, but they are not fair to Nigeria. All the money that we spend to travel up and down is quite difficult that 
we cannot pay anything about it. But now, mm -hmm. there's no, no kind of any competition, mm -hmm. no any uh, uh, <laughs> want to say, ah, I'm sorry for, for all what has happened. So, definitely it's wrong. Oh, oh. Yes, Nigerians. All right. Yeah? The politicians will just be doing their thing the way they like. All right, Usman. I think uh, you got it wrong there, but I next chairman actually apologized to Nigerians. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. You are connected. Can you speak out? Well, let me allow you to go there. We have another caller here. Hello, good morning. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Your name and where you're calling from? Hello, I'm calling you from Okay, I'm live from Joss. Go ahead. Yes. I'm live. Go ahead. Uh oh, we lost Abdul Light there. Hello, good morning. Hello, are you there? Well, I need to let you go there. Uh, Usman, I think contrary to what you said, the INEC chairman actually apologized uh, to Nigeria, not just to Nigerians, but to the international community. Uh, it's even when the APC chairman insisted that he must, he again uh, apologized. Okay, let's go to our last caller. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Hello, good morning. We are with you. Your name? Hello, we can hear you loud and clear. Yeah, it's Yakubu coming from Bauchi State. Okay, Yakubu from Bauchi. Go ahead, Yakubu. Yes, uh, I somewhat agree with uh, uh, what uh, Mr. Wala said. Okay. Yes. Uh, because Nigeria, seriously, the leaders are uh, blocking their south instead of developing Nigeria. Okay. So you cannot expect you know, good things to come. Anything that happens like this will say, uh -huh. you know, uh, they, are, they, are, they can do even more than this because of what you have to say. Oh, all right, all right, Yakub. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you, Yakub. With that. Uh, all right. Uh, I think that is all the calls we can take this morning. The lines are buzzing, but we can't go further than this. But, well, in the days ahead, we will still be on this issue. Let's see how best uh, INEC will go about this. Well, to our resource people this morning, Honorable Muhammad Ali, my no former minority leader, Kedina <coughs> State House of Assembly, our security expert. Honorable, thank you for your time this morning. We're already out of time, Honorable. We'll we build on this. We're already out of time. Uh, Honorable Adam Idris, the Social Democratic Party Chairman, Kaduna State Chapter. Arubu, thank you for your time, too. Thank you very much. All right. And uh, Ibrahim Garba Wala. Arubu, thank you for your time. Thank you, thank you. All so right. Really thank you. Yeah. Well, there you are. Whatsoever you do, get your PVC ready. Get prepared to go out on Saturday. Better late than never. You must go out and elect leaders and not rulers. Let's elect people that will lead us at least to the promised land. I am Abdul Aziz Ahmed Kadir. Thank you for investing your time with us. Good morning. Thank you.